The possibility is growing that another hurricane forms in the Atlantic. Hi, everybody. I'm Chief Meteorologist Chris Justice, keeping you informed on all things tropical weather right now. We are watching now a high chance of development in the Atlantic in this area. If you're new to this page, please consider going ahead and subscribing, like this video, and please, if you will, let me know where you're watching this from. It helps me tailor my forecast to you so that I can help you out and help you plan for what could be heading uh, our way as we go into next week. Now, I want to let you know what's going on with it right now with the data that I have at my disposal. And what I'm seeing here is a lot more thunderstorm activity with this tropical wave moving toward the west. And new tonight, uh, the National Hurricane Center has gone ahead and tagged this Invest 98. So it's an area they're invest investigating. What that means is we're able to get more model data on this and eventually uh, likely some recon flights. It'll feed our computer models to help give us a better idea where this could be going. Why do we need to pay so close attention to this? Because the models show it moving west. I want to say one key phrase that I want you to remember over the next week. Weaker goes west. The weaker this system stays in the near term, the more west, therefore closer it gets to the Caribbean islands and the United States. If it intensifies more quickly or earlier than these models are showing, the more of a chance it has at getting pulled to the north. They get uh, higher, those that, that storm gets higher and more in line with a dip in the jet stream that's gonna come in and kind of pick and scoop it up. So we'll have to wait and see. If this thing intensifies quickly, I think it's a lower chance of impact in the United States. I never wanna hope for a stronger system because somebody will be impacted by it. But I can tell you the weaker this stays in the near term, the higher the chance is it actually uh, impacts many more. So let me show you what the models are showing right now. Uh, the ensembles, the European, which is an average of them all, shows tropical something hitting the Windward Islands, St. Martin in particular, St. Lucia, uh, some areas in between there are going to get impacted by something tropical as early as Monday or Tuesday. So you've got a couple of days to prepare for this. Likely looks like a tropical depression, maybe a tropical storm. The model's not too keen on that, uh, but a tropical something moving in Monday, Tuesday. Then they move it toward the west. Then they start to curve it right there. But does that curve actually happen? Let's dig deeper. Let's look at the European model from today. European did a great job at tracking Debbie. Uh, picked up on earlier trends than, than the other models did. It doesn't show anything developing until Sunday night, Monday. And again, this is Monday evening at 8 p.m. A lower pressure moving into the Windward Islands. So likely some rain and some gusty winds, but doesn't look to be very strong just yet. Now, things have changed in a hurry this tropical season so far. And we know that as we move forward, we're gonna have to watch this for you folks in the Windward and Leeward Islands. But what I can tell you right now is from what I'm seeing, we're likely looking at some rain with it not blowing up too much. Where the models do agree on it blowing up is west. So you get closer to Puerto Rico, uh, we could be having this turning into a tropical storm, which would be Ernesto. Uh, this would be Tuesday afternoon into uh, Wednesday morning. Then it's back out over the water here, and this is where the models show it growing in intensity very quickly, likely turning into a hurricane by Wednesday night, Thursday, likely turning into a strong hurricane Thursday afternoon, if not a major hurricane, Cat 3, Cat 4, somewhere in that neighborhood, Thursday into Friday. That's why we gotta watch this so closely. This European model wants to thread that needle ever so slightly, between Bermuda and the Outer Banks, but this is a major Cat 5 according to this European model, so it's a strong one. Look at the waves that that could generate. I mean, I mean, the power with this would reach all the way to the Carolinas with a, a rough rip current and some strong seas right there. Uh, so we'll have to watch that for any beachgoers. It gets very close, guys. I gotta tell you, I mean, being that we're so many days out, that gives me some comfort. Okay, this is next Sunday. Uh, you know, we got 10 days to track it. Um, so that's the key here is that where it's located in the Atlantic right now, we would have until probably Sunday, Monday, uh, the 18th or 19th of August before it's a threat to the United States. And that's if it becomes a threat. Let's look at that same model stretching out to the wind speeds. All right also want to show you the new model that came in the midday run further north. Not by much, but it's something. All right, so let's extend this out. Boy, do these winds grow 
Oof. I mean, those those grays and those whites right there, that's Cat 5 strength. That's 145, 155 mile per hour winds. Um, major, major hurricane there. Uh, threading that needle between the Outer Banks and Bermuda and then moving up toward the north. Um, let's look at that just for a second because, I mean, it, steering currents would have it that it would hopefully stay off the northeast coast, but uh, that's a close call. And again, that's why we need to be dialed in on this, on well, the entire east coast and the Caribbean island chain, okay? Let's look at the GFS model. It's not as optimistic on one run. The GFS midday run shows a tropical depression, tropical storm already really forming before the islands here. So 45 mile per hour winds, according to this model on the Windward Islands. Uh, so that'd be Tuesday morning. Then it moves up toward Puerto Rico in the Caribbean a bit where it wants to do a little dance here and, and become possibly even a hurricane. It dips south of Puerto Rico. Then it goes over the high mountains of Hispaniola where it pops back out starts to interact with Turks and Caicos, parts of, of the Bahamas. And then it's really growing here, growing into a strong hurricane, major hurricane by Friday. Uh, so within a day or so of the European, just just moving toward the north here. Oh man, this is Cat 5 strength any day on the GFS model. This will be next Sunday. Again, same time frame, the 18th, 19th, sitting off the Florida Carolina coast and threading that needle in between the Outer Banks and Bermuda. It looks like it's a little bit lost here, according to these models. A little bit lost, just kind of floating around out here. So where does it go beyond that? That's the question. Let's stretch this out a little bit wider view. Oh, folks, that's why, again, anybody along the East Coast needs to pay attention to this. Stretching out right there. Man, oh, man. New York City. I, I mean, just about anyone could be impacted by this down the Northeast Coast. Now, this is one model of one model one model run of one model, I'm telling you. Uh, let's look at the earlier run of the GFS model. It was even closer to the United States. And again, remember the term, weaker goes west. The weaker this stays, the more it'll go west, and then it starts to blow up. All the computer models blow it up, it's just a matter of where. Here's the deal with this earlier run of the GFS, which kind of uh, gives that some validation. It keeps it completely weak all the way through the Caribbean, just a low pressure system through Wednesday, Thursday even. Then it pops back out over the Atlantic where it's still so weak. But once it hits some warmer waters over the Bahamas, it starts to grow and grow fast. Hurricane sitting off the Florida coast on Friday night and Saturday, getting very close to the Carolinas and Georgia as a strong hurricane next Sunday. Again, 10 days out, we've got time to track it. A lot will change. Not a, a lot might change. A lot will change, okay? Just showing you the possibilities here and want you to take that response. Now, I'm not saying this is going to happen, but I do want to show you this just to stress that anybody along the East Coast, or even the Gulf for that matter, should pay special attention to this because just about anything's possible with this system because we have a very active time frame here. Looks like it gets very close to a landfall in North Carolina, according to this GFS model, uh, near Wilmington, and then kind of grazes the East Coast before scooting back out to sea uh, early the following week, so uh, 10, 15 days from now. Long time to track it. What does that look like on the models? Well, it keeps the winds really, really, um, the GFS, the new one, the 18Z, wants to take it out to sea. Hurricane getting into a major hurricane status in here. Whew. All right, let's go back a model run how much closer in that is so one model run shifted it from that to that either way folks that's a serious storm just offshore that we need to stay dialed in on that would show uh, a very strong landfall 100 mile per hour or more making landfall somewhere in North Carolina so what are the ensembles the average of all the computer models the many different runs of the European model Slightly different starting point, slightly different speed, slightly different strength. Uh, they have something, I guess we can agree on here, near the Windward Islands on Monday, Tuesday. That's about the extent of what we're confident on right now. Something tropical, probably a tropical storm named Ernesto, will be near the Windward Islands in Puerto Rico by Monday, Tuesday. Beyond that, we have to wait and see. The European models want to really kind of curve this out you see many 980s, 981, 974. So they do show a strong hurricane in here. 
And that, that looks to be very likely, according to the ingredients right here and according to um, what, what we're looking at in the environment of the Atlantic and above it, okay? Lots of energy in this area. So does it thread that needle in between the Outer Banks and Bermuda? That's the big question. Our very first computer run models on this, um, is it in invest now and, and what, where, where is it going? So it's got it kind of curving right in this location between Bermuda uh, and the Outer Banks. We're going to have to watch that. We're going to have to watch it very closely. If it does not make that curve, that's where we start to have the problem. And remember, weaker goes west. If it stays weaker longer, it's going to have a, a higher chance at getting closer to the United States. So again, a couple of things here for me. Let me know where you're far watching from. Like this video. And please, if you don't already, subscribe to this channel. My commitment to you is to keep you posted all the way through. I want to let you know where this is going and what may form beyond that because we're in a very active pattern here of hurricane season where we're likely to see name after name after name because of the waves rolling off the coast of Africa right now are potent. They are strong. And we're going to keep you posted around the clock here. So, folks, thank you for tuning in. And again, uh, please subscribe. Please like this video. Let me know where you're watching from. I do go back in the comment section. I love to see your feedback. And I really do appreciate uh, uh, reading your comments and, let, and letting you know what's happening here. Uh, we will keep you posted. Next model run will come out in a couple hours.